Is it cool to hate Tears of the Kingdom now? With the honeymoon phase long gone, some Zelda fans' opinions towards the game have turned sour. But is it justified? Or do people only have the sentiment now, now that they are worn out from the game? This shift in feeling isn't anything new. Hell, it's the opposite of new. When a new game starts to become old, your opinion becomes more jaded towards the game as you start to see its flaws more clearly. Whether it's because you chose to overlook them at first, enthralled in the novelty of something fresh, or as you become more experienced with the game, the flaws become more apparent. It's an unavoidable feeling most of us get towards anything, really. Eventually, whatever new experience that once excited you loses that excitement the more you become familiar with it. So, is this just a cycle of life? That no matter how good something is, you'll eventually find a reason to dislike it down the road? Like, are all Zelda games destined to feel bad at some point? And those who feel this way are just unappreciative downers who bandwagon on trends and just drop off once the trend dies out? Personally, I don't think so, because if that was the case, all previous Zelda games would have had the same trajectory with falling in and out of favor of their fans, but that rarely happens. So why is Tears of the Kingdom unfavored among part of the Zelda fanbase? Well, I think it boils down to one main reason. Burnout. Burnout. To preface, since Breath of the Wild was released, the Zelda fanbase was split into two. One side was of new fans or old fans who were finding a resurgence into the series because of Breath of the Wild's new open-air gameplay that completely overhauled the standard Zelda formula. And the other side were fans of the old Zelda formula, who weren't fond of Nintendo's new approach with the series, that being the open-air style of Breath of the Wild. And I feel like there was a median of the two sides, as I included myself as one of them. We welcomed the new changes, but still yearned for a more classic approach in the future. Regardless, this divided the player base, with fans of the new Hero in Blue, and fans of the old Hero in Green. And no matter which side of the fence you were on, Nintendo had found success with Breath of the Wild and this new formula. So Nintendo wasn't going to stop the momentum of Breath of the Wild success as they carried forward with this new era of Zelda. So logically speaking, regardless of the naysayers, this new direction should only propel things higher as it expands on what was previously immensely successful, right? In hindsight, yes, but Nintendo's way of approaching Breath of the Wild sequel with Tears of the Kingdom was, in my opinion, mishandled. And look, before I get into why, I think Tears of the Kingdom standalone is still an extremely ambitious game. It's three times the size of Breath of the Wild. It truly is a marvel of a video game. I will never undermine that. Hell, if Breath of the Wild never existed and all we had was Tears of the Kingdom, I wouldn't be saying anything. But you can't argue that it doesn't feel like Nintendo just pressed the reset button on Breath of the Wild and decided to do a complete do-over. With somehow expecting fans to pretend Breath of the Wild never happened, giving us a more improved version of the game over half a decade later. And while some may argue that that is what a sequel is meant to be, which is a better version of the prequel, you're not wrong, but not to this extent. Tears of the Kingdom is just a more improved Breath of the Wild. That's it. And whether you find the game better or worse than Breath of the Wild, it doesn't offer much else besides just more. Again, I can't emphasize enough that Tears of the Kingdom alone feels fucking surreal, but we can't pretend that the last six years never happened. And this is where my main reason and why the sentiment for Tears of the Kingdom has changed shortly after release. Because once the novelty of the game wore off, the game just became more of the same. The new additions to Tears of the Kingdom weren't enough to warrant an entirely new game, when at its core it's still Breath of the Wild. Outside the new Zonai abilities, which were reminiscent to Breath of the Wild's Chica Slate abilities, and the addition of new areas like the sky and the depths, Everything else the game had to offer is just what Breath of the Wild gave us almost seven years ago. 
So once you became accustomed to the few new changes, you started to realize how you're just playing the same game again. The main objective went from blue Sheikah Shrines to green Zonai ones. But the overall redundancy of Breath of the Wild stayed the exact same in Tears of the Kingdom, just more of it. And while they didn't seem as redundant in Breath of the Wild because it was still new to us, having this gameplay repeat throughout Tears of the Kingdom really showed how repetitive it could be. Everything Breath of the Wild did, whether good or bad, Tears of the Kingdom just doubled down on it. For example, the four main temples are optional, and what they offer feel like glorified shrines. With their main puzzles being terminal-based puzzles that can be done in any order, similar to Breath of the Wild's Divine Beasts. And even outside the shrines and dungeons being repeated objectives from Breath of the Wild, even the side objectives are repeated from it. But it's not just the gameplay, it's even the story, as once again, the story is told through memories, which are also optional. And because of that, they hold no weight or value to the game's world building, as all of those events happened in the past. So both the gameplay and story are just a carbon copy of Breath of the Wild, whether it was looked at as good or bad. But it doesn't just end there, as the main overworld is still in Hyrule. And yes, while you have new areas like the sky and depths, they feel extremely underdeveloped compared to the surface, which was already established in Breath of the Wild. Tears of the Kingdom doesn't feel like a fresh take on what Breath of the Wild already did. It just feels like more of it. Everything Breath of the Wild had, Tears of the Kingdom has, and more. Overall, the vibe the game gives off feels like something we've already experienced before. So sequel or not, there is no excuse for the games to be this much alike. I've made this comparison many times before, but Majora's Mask, which was a sequel to Ocarina of Time, that also used the same engine, assets, and overall was graphically identical, still had its own theme and vibe to it, which was nothing like its prequel, Ocarina of Time or Phantom Hourglass to Spirit Tracks, like we've had direct sequels before in the Zelda series, but each have had their own identity. Tears of the Kingdom's identity is just Breath of the Wild, but with green-themed Zonai tech rather than blue Sheikah tech. And I'm not bringing up these points to rag on the game further, I've done that before already. But I'm mentioning this because regardless of which side of the fanbase you were on, you'd likely find Tears of the Kingdom still disappointing. Because even for those who loved Breath of the Wild, having a sequel that is borderline the exact same as the prequel would get old fast, no matter the expansions. And of course, for those who had hoped for the sequel to return to its more classic roots, you just got more of what you already didn't like. So no matter which side you were on, the game feels like a huge letdown. All because Nintendo decided to double down on Breath of the Wild's formula, both good and bad. So much so that they just remade the same game without any distinctive qualities that would give it its own identity. Which brings me back to my main reason on why Tears of the Kingdom is in the state that it's in. Burnout. Waiting 6 plus years for almost the exact same game, no matter the amount of new improvements, is still gonna get tiresome fast. I'm sure many of you can remember how special it was when first playing Breath of the Wild. The novelty for the game lasted years before getting old. But Tears of the Kingdom's novelty died within less than a year. Because once everyone got accustomed to the new additions the game had to offer, the core experience didn't change. It was just Breath of the Wild again. So that excitement died out fast. Of course, if you're someone who never played Breath of the Wild, playing Tears of the Kingdom first probably felt as special to you as it felt to fans who first played Breath of the Wild. Because everything the game had to offer was absolutely new to you. You had no prior experience to compare it to. And if you're one of those fans, lucky you. But for fans who had played Breath of the Wild and looked forward to Tears of the Kingdom giving them a fresh new adventure, quickly realized how it was just more of the same. Same world, same objectives, same graphics, same way of storytelling, same everything. Nintendo just doubled down on both the good and bad of Breath of the Wild and just gave us more of it. Which is why fans like myself have Burnout. 
Because if Nintendo thought they could just give us a definitive version of Breath of the Wild repackaged as a sequel and everyone would be happy, they were wrong. The game needs more of its own identity to give fans of the prequel a reason to play it. Which explains why, after Tears of the Kingdom's world-breaking record of initial release sales, the game hasn't sold much since. Like, with over 10 million copies sold on launch weekend alone, you'd expect by now sales would be far more than just double that. But as of recently, Nintendo reported that Tears of the Kingdom has only sold 20 million copies. And I say only, like that isn't insanely impressive, but having such a downward spiral after the release must have a reason. And I think that reason is, once people realized the suspicion was right and that Tears of the Kingdom didn't have much else to offer outside of Breath of the Wild, interest dropped. And trust me, I get no joy in saying this. I wish I had a reason to keep playing Tears of the Kingdom. As compared to when Breath of the Wild came out, I couldn't stop playing that game for years. And while I didn't expect to get the same level of obsession with Tears of the Kingdom, I also didn't expect to lose interest this quickly either. Tears of the Kingdom relied too much on Breath of the Wild's success, and because of it, it just piggybacked off of it, without doing anything unique for itself. So no, I don't think fans like myself are just hating on the game because it's not new or relevant anymore. Fans just want something new. While the Zelda series had always had similar games to one another, they still had their own identities to them. But Tears of the Kingdom really doesn't, and because of that, the fanbase is ready to move on to something new. Tears of the Kingdom took too long to be released for it to be just more of Breath of the Wild. I think if the game was just released as a massive expansion to Breath of the Wild, or had just come out three years after, opinions would be far different than now. But having fans wait this long for just an improved version of the game isn't acceptable. And thankfully, it seems like Nintendo have finally realized that, as they have stated in recent interviews that they are done with this saga and are ready to move on, even abandoning any ideas for DLC. And I don't see that as a bad thing, because this just means it's time to move on to a new chapter for the Legend of Zelda series. And I cannot wait for what's in store.